Hey there, welcome back to Amazing Psychology. I'm Freya Vagis and today we'll be looking at yet another engaging topic about lifespan psychology. Today's topic is specifically about psychosocial development in infancy and it was proposed by Eric Erikson. This topic has been asked several times for the exams and pretty much always it's been a 10 mark question, so it's very important. Let's take a look at it. Erikson psychosocial development has been asked several times in the question papers. Um, if you can take a look at this, you can see that there's a pattern. Sometimes it's been asked in combination with a definition of the infancy period. It's also been asked in combination with psychological and physical hazards during early childhood. But mostly it has been asked as a single 10 mark question as well. So it's a very important question. I'm on page 34 of your course book. I hope that you are too. This is section 3.7, Psychosocial Development in Infancy. So let's take a quick look at what psychosocial development in infancy means. Psychosocial development is the development of a person's understanding of the environment they are living in. It also involves figuring out how the environment relates to them, their behavior and their interactions with others. So put in simpler terms, it basically means learning about yourself through your surroundings and your interactions with other people. Now the theory was given by the psychoanalyst Eric Erikson and he categorized infancy as the period during which the child develops basic and long-standing expectations about his world. So basically what that means is the child is developing some fundamental understandings about the environment that it lives in and these fundamental understandings form the foundation of his or her expectations about the world as they grow up. Now Eric Erikson's theory has about eight different stages. Let's just quickly look at that. Infancy happens to be the first stage but there are a total of eight stages all together in the psychosocial theory which we will be looking at as we progress through the textbook. The first, as we talked about, is the infancy stage, where the main concept that we will be studying is trust versus mistrust. We then move on to the second stage, which is early childhood. Then we go to preschool, school age, adolescence, young adulthood, middle adulthood, and finally, almost towards the end of life, we have maturity. So these are the eight different stages that we'll be looking out throughout the course book as we move through it, as we go through the different stages of development in a human being. But for now, we will be focusing on the infancy stage where the main concept which is studied is trust versus mistrust. Right at the center of Erikson's psychosocial stage theory is the development of ego identity. Now, what does ego identity mean? It refers to a person's consciousness about their own self that is developed through their social interactions. So your identity or the way you perceive yourself as a human being and the cues that you get through your interaction with people around you and the environment you live in, all of that together forms your identity. This is called the ego identity according to Erikson. But along with that, every stage also goes through a pace or a sense of competence. Now what does competence mean? Competence means you have reached an accomplishment, that is if there is a given task and you are able to complete it successfully, you are competent. If you don't complete it successfully, you are incompetent. You've heard many people say you're a competent person or you're an incompetent person. But in Erickson's case, he uses the term competence in a different way. For him, all the eight stages that a person goes through in their life is important. But specifically in the infancy phase, there are certain tasks that an infant learns as they progress through their environment, the growth through the environment. And if they pass those stages successfully, that person will have a feeling of mastery. Now that sense of mastery is called ego strength or ego quality. 
but if the person fails to accomplish the tasks that they should at that particular stage of life, then the stage is poorly managed and the person will have a sense of inadequacy. This kind of competence and incompetence is always seen in every stage of a person's growth. But specifically when we're talking about infancy, Erickson focused on the development of a sense of trust or the lack of trust which is called mistrust. So what we have covered right now is an understanding of a person's ego identity which is formed from the um, understanding they receive through their social interaction with people and the environment they live in. And we've also talked about the sense of competence that a person builds as they go from one stage to another. The sense of competence is built if they handle the stage well and acquire the skills or the tasks that are expected to be acquired in that particular stage. If they don't, they will re remain with a sense of inadequacy. But if they do, they will earn a sense of mastery, which is termed ego strength or ego quality. Now, if we move on, we will see that at each stage, there is a sense of conflict as well that occurs. And it is this conflict that results in a person's decisions or the turning point in their development. The conflict can be uh, either on developing a psychological quality or failing to develop that quality. So if you remember just a little while back, I told you the main focus of Erickson during the infancy phase is on trust and mistrust. Trust and mistrust are both psychological qualities. So if a person develops uh, trust, then they have positively developed a psychological quality. If they fail to develop trust, then it results in a negative quality, which is mistrust. Usually between the time of birth and the first year, trust or mistrust develops in the child. Now let's see how this particular psychological quality develops during the infancy stage. Because an infant is purely dependent on their family members, the development of trust is based on the dependability and quality of a child's caregiver. If a child successfully develops trust, he or she will feel safe and secure in the world. So what happens here is, we are seeing that a child equates their trust with the caregiver to the trust that they experience from the rest of the world. Now, if the child has a caregiver who provides them their food on time, who picks them up when they cry, who takes care of them, gives them a bath, keeps them clean, cuddles them, then the child develops security and safety and feels trust towards the caregiver. But if the opposite happens, if the caregiver is inconsistent in feeding the child, in, if, it, uh, if the caregiver only feeds the child sometimes when the child cries but doesn't at other times, or if the caregiver doesn't cuddle the child, hold the child when the child is scared, or if the caregiver just openly rejects the child, the child develops a sense of mistrust towards the caregiver. And that mistrust is again projected on the rest of the world. So basically the child starts feeling that this the world that it's living in is not a safe place to be in and that the child cannot trust anyone. Now that's what's been explained in this section here. If the parents expose the child to warmth regularly and dependable affection, the infant's view of the world will be one of trust. But if the parents fail to provide a secure environment and fail to meet the child's basic needs, a sense of mistrust will come up. Now we all know that 100% trust cannot be developed and 100% mistrust can also be not developed. So there is going to be a range in there, right? A proper, a proper balance has to be striked. Now if that proper balance is striked, the child will develop a the virtue called hope, which means the strong belief that even when things are not going well, they will work out in the end. So what that means is maybe about 90% of the child time, the child will remain 
in trust but even if something goes wrong 10% of the time the child will still remain hopeful that things will eventually work out that is the result or that is the virtue of hope that is built in a child who has consistently received care from parents and has therefore developed the uh, psychological quality of trust but in the case there is a failure the maladaptive tendency or sensory distortion may develop and malignant tendency of withdrawal will develop what this basically means is that if the child fails to become a trusting child because they have not received the care from parents that they should have the child will show a tendency of withdrawal towards society. Now, the main factor that we are studying in Eric Erikson's psychosocial theory is the development of trust versus mistrust in the infancy period. But there are other social behaviors that also are developed during this phase. We'll just quickly look at some of them. The first is attachment. The concept of attachment was investigated by Ainsworth and her associates. What attachment means is it's an emotionally toned relationship or it's a tie to the mother that leads an infant to seek the mother's presence and comfort, especially when the infant is frightened or uncertain. So it's basically the development of a bond between the mother and the child. That bond is an emotional relationship that the mother and the child share and it's particularly strong when the infant is frightened or uncertain. Having that bond with the mother is needed for healthy emotional and social development during later childhood. So if the child learns or develops a strong bonding with the mother during infancy, that will help in healthy emotional and social development in the later stages of childhood. The second um, social factor or social behavior that we see within children in the infant stage is smiling. The smile has a very important influence on the mother-child relationship. The mother smiles to the child and the child, when the child sees that smile, the child responds with another smile in return. This forms the first social interaction between the mother and the child. Now this form of social smiling appears at seven to eight weeks uh, when the child is about seven to eight weeks and it's very important for a sense of bonding and attachment to form between the mother and the child. In the case where the mother is not available, the child forms this bonding with the person who takes care of it. The next social behavior is anxiety. Now about 10 months, when the child is about 10 months, and uh, you can see if the mother is not seen anywhere close by, the child will go searching for the mother, crawl around the mother, or go into all the different rooms that are around it, searching for the mother. And if the child is not able to find her, he starts crying or screaming. This shows that there is a sense of anxiety in the child. That anxiety is because the child senses that the child is separated from the mother. So it's actually another form of the attachment behavior that we saw in the last two cases. But in this case, the child shows anxiety because the child is not able to find its mother anywhere. And the last one is fear of strangers. Now this social behavior is seen when the child is very strongly attached to the mother. And if at that point someone else who the child does not know, an unfamiliar adult comes and takes the child or holds the child and the child doesn't see the mother anywhere around at that time, the child will most probably end up crying. This kind of stranger anxiety appears towards the end, or towards the uh, beginning of infancy and it is seen to disappear slowly towards the end of the first year because that's the time when the child comes in contact with more and more relatives and the child starts getting used to seeing other people or being held by other people. So altogether we have looked at the psychosocial theory of development that was proposed by Eric Erikson. We have seen that the main social behavior or the psychological behavior that has been focused on during the infancy stage 
is the formation of trust versus mistrust. We see that people get a sense of identity of, uh, about themselves and about their, their um, personality from their surroundings and their interactions with other people. And this results in the formation of a sense of ego identity. And later on, because of the person's interaction with the society and all the people around them, uh, especially because of uh, the, the child's interaction with mother and the, care, the rest of the caregivers in the family, the child will slowly start developing a sense of trust if it has been taken care of well. But if it's not been taken care of well, it will develop a sense of mistrust. And the same trust or mistrust is projected on its understanding about the world, whether the world is going to be a safe and secure place to live in or whether the world is going to be a horrible place to live in. We also looked at some other additional uh, psych uh, social behaviors. The first is attachment, second is smiling, the third is anxiety, and the fourth is fear of strangers or stranger anxiety. I hope this section was very clear to you. It's been asked several times and all times it's been asked as a 10 mark question. So it's quite important that you get all the facts right in here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. Um, also, if you have other friends who are doing the course with you, please share this video with them so they also get the benefit of learning this particular portion of uh, the textbook and so they can be prepared for the exam in advance. Thank you so much for your time um, and I hope to see you in the next class pretty soon. Thank you.